Hello, developers. I'm Dan Krantz, Chief Information Officer for Keysight Technologies. I'm excited to share some insights with you on intelligent test automation. Let me start with a quick story. Back in my early software engineering career, way back when Amazon only sold books and Netscape was the browser of choice, I developed some technology for a major international bank. And it worked beautifully in my lab, so we shipped it over to headquarters in Manhattan. A few days later, my boss showed up at my desk with a paper airplane ticket in hand. Yep, back in those days, we used paper tickets. And his comment was, you're going to New York, your software doesn't work, and the customer's not happy. I was shocked. What did, what did I overlook? I, I hadn't done exhaustive testing. We had limited resources in the lab. But if I was honest with myself, testing was mundane. I had other deadlines. And it turns out my technology used over a wide area network just didn't scale. It worked in the lab, but not uh, over the wide area network. And we had unexpected results. And in a bank, you just can't have unexpected results. Fast forward to just last week when I met with my Linux engineering team. They're developing and deploying the standard Linux containers for our R&D teams here in Keysight. And I was attending one of their sprint reviews. They demoed a couple of cool new features and I asked if they could make a few changes. Unfazed, on the fly, right in front of me, they made a few changes, rebuilt the image, and then to my surprise, they launched an automated regression test. A last step, I asked them, what is that? And they said, oh, we have fully automated the testing of our Linux build because we hate two things. We hate disappointing our colleagues with buggy software, and equally motivating for us is we hate mundane work like manual testing. Their test automation platform that they're using is Eggplant. And it turns out it's the same visual intelligent test automation platform that my teams use on the code behind Keysight.com. It's the same test platform my teams use in our uh, Salesforce apps and our Oracle ERP environment. My teams, it turns out, have rallied like crazy around this Eggplant platform. They're motivated to rid the world of bad software, to overhaul user experiences, and perhaps above all, to avoid mundane manual testing. So I'm excited to show you Eggplant in action, and there's no one better than my colleague, Max Gerard, to take us on that journey. Max, over to you. Thank you very much, Dan. Hi, everyone. My name is Max Gerard, and I'm the Chief Evangelist and VP of Pre-Sales and Technical Consulting here at Eggplant, part of Keysight. And what I wanna do for you today is go and talk to you about the DAI, or Digital Automation Intelligence Suite, which really allows you to go and test the functionality, usability, and performance of any application whatsoever. Now, Eggplant can really be used to go and test any device, any platform, and you can see here on the left-hand side, I've got a model of an application. An example we'll use today is a mobile banking application. And on the right-hand side, I've got a real mobile device. And just to go and quickly show you here, this is one of the device labs that we can connect to, and we help many of our customers go and build. And you can see in here, we've got point-of-sale terminals, mobile devices, PlayStations, Xboxes, uh, network routers, TV boxes, Really anything that has a user interface, Eggplant is able to go and test. And anything we can make an API call to, Eggplant can go and test as well. So now let me go and explain to you what this model here actually is. Now the areas here in dark purple, think of those as the screens in the application. And then the areas here in gray, think of these as the actions that a user can take on each of those screens. So on the account screen, we could go to current payment, savings payment, ISA payment, and then each of those actions takes me to a, a new screen that you can see here. And then, for example, confirm payment will go and take me to the payment confirm screen. And so what we have here is a digital twin of the application itself, with the areas here in purple representing the screens in the application, and the areas here in gray representing the actions that a user can take against each of those screens. And so now what I want to go and show you is how we can record a test case using the model, but then also how can I go and uh, automate my exploratory testing using Eggplant's AI algorithms as well. So if I go to test case builder over here and then click on build new test case, I can just start clicking through the model to go and record my journey. So let's say in this case, I click on launch app and then I go username, password, login, and then I go to current payment, and then I go to, let's say, account, sort code, amount, reference, make a payment, cancel. And then I'll go and give this test case a name. Let's say test case underscore cancel 
payment. And then I come to my test cases over here. We can see that uh, test case just there. I can then go click here on play. And then what, what you'll see go and happen now is that test case will start running against my device that you see here on the right hand side. And as it's executing, what you'll see is that will highlight different areas of the screen in orange and in green. And this is where Eggplant is using its intelligent image and OCR recognition to go and drive the test. Now, not only can Eggplant look through the user interface using our intelligent image recognition and OCR recognition like a real user would, but we can also go and integrate with the object layer of the application as well, meaning we can test the full stack of the application. Not only this, Eggplant can also be used to go and make API calls as well. So you can see there in the space of just a few seconds, I've managed to go and click through my model to go and record a test case, and we've seen it there execute. And so what you can see there is you can really put Eggplant into the hands of any non-technical user um, that you might have in your organization. So now what I want to go and show you is how Eggplant can also go and automate to exploratory testing. So if I just go click run on this model that you see here at the top, then what you're going to see start happening is Eggplant is going to start exploring the application. But I don't know up front exactly what actions we're going to go ahead and do. And so you can see here we're launching the application. We go username, password, and then we're going to go log in. And what is happening here is Eggplant is using its three core algorithms to go and decide what the next best action to go and do is. Now, the first of these algorithms is called the bug hunting algorithm. So let me explain to you how that works. Let, let's say, for example, on the confirmed payment action, which I'll highlight down here, let's just say for argument's sake that we find a bug. And on there is a text box and the radio button. Then what Eggplant will go and do is it will go and slightly increase the probability of us going to other areas of the application that have also got text boxes and radio buttons on, because maybe there's a pattern there. And then let's say we go to make transfer. And again, let's say there's text boxes and radio buttons on there. And there's also a bug that we find. Wow, we're really starting to go and find a pattern here. And so, I've, of course, I've simplified the algorithm there. But hopefully you can get the understanding that Eggplant is able to explore the application, to test it exactly as a manual tester might go and do, and then make adjustments on what we do next based upon what we're learning about the application. And that's exactly what you would do if you're a manual tester, right? You might go and do a test or maybe you do 10 tests and then you think, actually, I've learned something from those 10 tests. I'm just going to do a bit of exploring. I'm going to spend five or 10 minutes exploring about what I've learned to try and give more feedback to the development team. And so what we're really doing at Eggplant is trying to inject the intelligence of a human into the way that we go and do automated exploratory testing. Now, the second algorithm that we have is our test case algorithm. So if you remember that test case that I recorded just a moment ago, then what Eggplant is able to do is it's able to take those linear journeys through the application, but then go and add things that a real user might go and do against the system. And so a linear journey on an application like this might be to um, search for, to transfer money to, uh, select the amount, uh, select the, um, uh, the account you want to go and transfer to, and then click transfer. But in reality, it might be that just before you click transfer, you go, actually, no, that was the wrong amount. So you change the amount. And then you go, actually, that was also the wrong account for me to transfer to because my colleague had said, can you transfer that to my personal account and not my business account? And then maybe you thought, oh, actually, I want that to go and be a, um, a monthly uh, direct debit, for example. So you set that up and then you click transfer. And that's a perfectly valid journey for a real user to go and do against that system but it's not necessarily one that you'd ever get the chance to go and test. And so what Eggplant is able to do is to take those linear journeys and then add in things like a real user might do. And that's often where you find all the bugs and issues, right? You know, all those linear journeys that people do or people test in their system, they work really, really well because they've been tested for years. And it's usually those ones where you do something that is in inverted commas out of the ordinary, but for your users, it's not out of the ordinary. It's just how they want to use the application. And so Eggplant is able to go and find all of those issues that ordinarily you might not be able to go and find unless you did it in a manual way. And then finally, the third algorithm that we've got is our coverage algorithm. And so let me just go and explain to you 
um, what this uh, what this really is. So because we have this notion of a model, um, we can actually go and tell you all the different permutations that you have um, and have not run in your application and go and tell you different coverage levels. Now, the different co coverage levels that we have are nodes, pairs, extended, full exploratory. Uh, so let's just talk about a few of these. Well, node level coverage just tells me, have I gone and done that particular action or have I gone to that particular screen in whatever order? And so you can see here, in this case, we've got 100% node level coverage because we've gone to every screen and we've done every action. But now if I go click on all pairs coverage, what we can go and see here is that um, it's going to tell me all the possible pairs of journeys um, that I can do in my system. So all of the things where I go this and then that. And if I just expand a few of these here, you can see some of these uh, journeys. So, you know, payment confirm screen, then go to the account screen or back to your accounts, then current transfer, back to your account and current payment. And so because we have this notion of the model, we can go and tell Eggplant, go and run all of my possible pairwise journeys as quickly as possible. And you can see in this case, I've got 98% pairwise coverage. And because I've hit 91 out of 95 of the possible pairwise paths in my application. And the really cool thing is that even if I come back to my model here and I go and add a new action to it to go and do a certain thing, let's say we add something called delete user, all of my underlying coverage algorithms are updated. And so if I come to my coverage report over here, then click on view heat map, what we're doing here is everything in darker blue is really well covered and tested, but anything in gray, we haven't tested yet. And so we can see here that all of this application is really well tested, except for my delete user action that I just added. And so Eggplant is able to optimize where we go and test based upon where the risk is. And in this case, the risk is where those new actions are. So now I want to go and show you a full end-to-end -end user journey across both desktop and mobile. So let's just go click run on this now, and we'll see this test start executing. And I'm also going to go bring up my desktop system that you see over here, so you can see the test journey running there as well. Now, what you're going to see happen here, first of all, is we're going to go and start writing an email from my mobile device. And so if we go and see here on the right hand side now on my device, we're just writing that email. And as part of this, we're also gonna go and take a selfie, which we're gonna go and attach to my email here, just to go and show you that we can do every action um, that a user would want to go and do against the device. So you can see here, we go to the camera, we then go and flip the camera around. And so you'll go and see uh, myself appear on screen right now. I don't know if that's going to give me my very best angle, but there we go. You can see there we go and attach that um, screenshot to my email uh, there, click send. And now what's going to go happen is we're now going to go connect into my desktop machine and we're going to log into my email client. That's the sort of journey you might do on the way to work, right? You might be on your phone, on your email, you then get into the office and then you go and start at the desktop client. This is a pretty valid test for someone to want to go and do on an email client. And as you can see now, we're now running against my desktop machine. And it's the same engine to go and run it mobile as it is against desktop and any platform. So no extra learning curve. And now what you can see is I've got two-factor authentication turned on. So then it goes and sends a text message to my phone. I then extract that six-digit pin out. We then enter that onto my desktop device, as you can see down here. And then we're going to go and find that email that I've just written on my mobile device on my desktop system. And so you can see there how easy it is for us to go and do a full end-to-end -end journey. And the thing to take away here is, first of all, it's the same engine that runs across both platforms. But secondly, the model is our representation of all of those platforms. And so rather than having you know, a really complex open source framework um, where you go and glue together all of these different um, you know, open source uh, technologies to go and do your testing, where actually you'll find you'll spend more time uh, maintaining that open source framework than you do actually doing testing. But the model is the framework here. And so you can see here, I have send an email to my mobile, log into my desktop, get the code from my mobile, then reply from my desktop. And so having lots of systems as part of a single model 
it's a really, really straightforward thing for eggplant to go and handle. Now, I'll show you is how eggplant is really easily able to go and integrate with your DevOps pipeline. And an example here, we're going to use the DevOps as our um, pipeline. And what you're going to see now is we're going to start editing the source code of an application here in Eclipse. Then I'm going to click here on commit, click on new commit, and then we're going to go and click on push to upstream. And that's going to automatically trigger a test in my DevOps pipeline that you can see here. And you can see now I've got a test running against my mobile device that you can see here on the right hand side. Now we're going to purposely make this test fail. And when it fails, we're going to go and send a message into my Slack instance. We're also going to upload the uh, log file and the video and the screenshot into my Jira instance. And so you can see there now that that test has actually failed. And once that's finished, you can see the Slack message comes in. We go into my Jira instance and we can see there the log files from that particular test execution are stored here. So what you can see there is a full end-to-end -end DevOps flow where we're able to edit the source code of our application in Eclipse. That kicks off our test through our Azure DevOps pipeline. We then run the test. And then at the end of the test, we send a message into the Slack instance, but we also go and upload our logs into Jira. And that's because you know, all of that's made possible by Eggplant's open RESTful API, which really allows us to integrate with anything. And you can see in this test execution here, not only are we testing mobile, but desktop machines stored in um, Azure, as well as AWS. So Eggplant is able to go and test multi-cloud applications. And finally here, I wanna go show you another example of some of the really cutting edge integrations that we're building here at Keysight uh, between uh, both uh, Keysight technologies and Eggplant software. And so what you can see on screen here, you can see in the center there, a mobile device which is being driven by eggplant in the way that I just showed you. But in here, we've also got in the lower left, um, we've got a UXM wireless test set, um, which allows us to do you know, 5G base station emulation and monitoring of throughput between the device and the base station. Um, in the upper right, we've got a waveform analyzer, which allows us to go and take precise current and voltage measurements to allow us to see the exact power that will be removed from the battery when the device is being tested. And then finally here in the lower right, we have a DC power analyzer, allowing us to test battery change and charging functionality of the device. And by integrating both eggplant software and Keysight hardware, we're able to go and test the full stack of an application all the way from the, you know, the low level hardware components right the way up to the user interface. And so what this means is that we can do things like, well, go and tell me how my application behaves when I'm on a, a, you know, an OK 3G network. And tell me how it also behaves on a really, really strong 5G network. And so rather than doing all of those tests in silos, we're now able to go and integrate our user interface testing with our ability to go and emulate all of those different environments and go and test um, the way the physical device goes and behaves. So just some really cutting edge technology integrations that we're now building. So that's everything I wanted to show you today. I hope that's been interesting and I look forward to speaking to you all again soon. Thank you, Max. Keysight has uh, some great resources, everybody. You can see here, click through and get more information for you. But let me encourage you to not miss the chance to join us at Keysight's Live from the Lab for some additional uh, insights on intelligent test automation. Wrapping up the session right now, I'm reminded of how the Viking warriors always paired a shield with their trusty sword. So as developers, you head back into battle, creating software and automating infrastructure with your development swords. Let me encourage you to not forget to grab your trusty shield of intelligent test automation. From what Max has shown, I now see why my developers are rallying around eggplant. It's truly an amazing shield against bad software experience. Enjoy the rest of DevNet Create. Thank you.